Praise God. Glory to God. You know, it's amazing the revelation that God has given to me about this. Um, last night, I started off talking about it, but I want to complete um, I just had a joke in my mind that my hair acting like President Donald Trump. But <laughs> I remember when I first got on <laughs> Periscope. <laughs> then people come on line toss up. Hey, look at Jimmy Neutron prophesying here. <laughs> they, they would get on the line. So look at Jimmy Neutron prophesying here. Back then, I used to tell you my mouth was streaming. I like your mama. <laughs> That's somebody get on line toss. Your mama was with me last night. Listen, I would say the same thing about your mama, but she she looked like a baby mule. I ain't. see. I can't say the same thing about your mama. I let you. I let that slide. Cause your mama got you know, your mama got more mustache than Steve Harvey and Richard Pryor put together. Everybody, blessings to you. <laughs> and so, the revelation is amazing because I'm um, dealing with Lucifer, Jesus has shown me something that I've never seen before. Because in the past, Lucifer had more than one responsibility that was being carried out through him. Her him, <laughs> him, she. <laughs> the biblical scholars that messed him up. <laughs> be, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet, Bob. Say sometimes people think that prophecy teachers are actually prophets. No, they're prophecy teachers and they always wrong. <laughs> Tell them it's gonna be five years, they're gonna be five years uh before the great coming of the Lord. It's gonna be five years. <laughs> It's gonna be five. <laughs> it's gonna be five years before the coming of the Lord. Uh, these signs are going to have to come to pass before the coming of the Lord. So let me let me tell you something. Make sure you get your rice and peas in order, and get your beans and get it all together. Because <laughs> when the tribulation hit, it's gonna be five years. <laughs> And then they try to convince you. They take you over the top. Let's go over to Ezekiel. Over in Ezekiel. See, this is the five-year mark. <laughs> this is the five-year mark that's got to take place before anything takes place, before the coming of the Lord. It's going to be five years. <laughs> It'll be about the five hood saints talking about, okay, I got five years, I got... So, Lucifer is acquainted with the economy of God. That's why Lucifer is able to maneuver to stop God's economy operating in your life because Lucifer was aware of that realm very clearly. Now, oftentimes, you won't see where Lucifer is ruling you financially because Lucifer oftentimes will make you feel more spiritual because you don't talk about money. Lucifer being a deceiving spirit will make you feel more holy and close to God because you don't ever discuss anything in the realm of finances. 
the biggest, one of the biggest deceptions is this, that the truth of the matter is the Bible is really a financial book about how God wants to bless those that he created and make them like him, blessed. But what Lucifer does not want nobody to understand that because if you get that part of your life down pat, you'll realize that you're unstoppable because you already have knowledge, right? So you're not lacking knowledge. It's the money area that once you get that, oh, snap, what, what is the devil going to do to stop you? All he can do in certain aspects is, okay, well, you ain't got enough to buy for it, so I'm just, you know, I'm going to delay you right here. And that's something that he often does. But when you get in the realm of having it, what is he going to do? What is he going to say to you? Because you got, you, got, you got all means saturated by the power of the Holy Spirit. So what is he going to do to stop you? Now, Lucifer knows all the portals. Because Lucifer was once a portal opener. Lucifer was once a portal opener. Lucifer knows the portals because Lucifer was a portal opener. Lucifer was over those 33%, one third of them angels. So Lucifer is aware of how gates, portals, doors, windows operate. Now, saints, I want you to see this. What did Jesus say to Peter? On this rock, I build my church and the gates, the gates, the gates, the gates, the gates, the gates, the gates. Where's Lucifer getting his ideas? Lucifer is getting the ideas from the fact that the gates, the portals, the windows was all revealed to Lucifer. Lucifer knew about all these things. So Lucifer with the kingdom of darkness is just imitating the kingdom that was already familiar with. That goes in line, if I just be real raw, that's why if someone following a man of God or a woman of God, you see them try to build their own kingdom, but they using the same material of the kingdom that they was in before because Lucifer hasn't changed. Lucifer know that there's gates. So Lucifer got gates in the kingdom and Jesus said, on this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, I want to say something to you that's real shocking. Lucifer has gates in his kingdom. But God is the one that set up the gates. God made all of the gates of hell. You got me? Huh? You got me? You feel me?
go to Isaiah 54. Okay, before I go to Isaiah 54, let's go to Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45 verse 7 says this. I form the light. I create darkness. I make peace. I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Now, I love Isaiah. Isaiah was a raw prophet. If I can compare myself to any prophet, I was just thinking about this. If I can compare myself to any prophet, or if the likeness thereof can be compared, I'll probably go with Isaiah. There's a reason why I'm saying that too. And I never thought about this, but Isaiah, I'm thinking about this now. Isaiah is the one prophet that I, I think that come a little as close, a little close to the prophetic realm that I'm in because Isaiah... He knows that God has a secret behind this whole life thing. And here's the secret. God has created a system that anyone that does not want his system can choose to walk in if they want. So watch this here. If, 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 okay, this is the kingdom system. If I don't want the kingdom system and I want this system, he going to let me have it. When he said that I created darkness, it means that he has not made anybody a robot and manipulated them into serving them. Everybody has a choice whether or not they want it or they can choose the other path. So here's what he did. While there's the will of God here, what he's saying in Isaiah 45 verse 7, I've created something that's not my will. Because I don't want you to feel like I'm apprehending you to love me. I don't want you to feel like I'm forcing you to serve me. So I'm going to create a system. And watch what he did. He said, I'm going to do it because I know Satan too stupid to do it. And I know that since Satan chose another system, I'm going to make him the God of this system. So everybody that don't want my way, they'll be subject to Satan's way and it's either either or. So God really created the gates of hell. He created hell. Remember Jesus exposed the secret out the bag? He said that hell was created by for the devil and his angels. So Jesus let the, the secret out. It was created. Who created it? Not Satan. Satan ain't smart. And Satan wouldn't create his own place of judgment. God created it. God created the evil. So remember, it's called the gates of hell. So the gates are of hell. And who created hell? I'm teaching slow so you can understand because this a, is a touchy subject if you don't have understanding. But I'm giving you understanding. I'm going to explain it to you like a little child so it's, it's very easy for you to understand. I'm, I'm, I'm listen. So here's the thing. If God created the gates of hell, he know how to shut the gates that he created when he read it. Saints, why was the children of Israel underneath Pharaoh? Was it because the devil was powerful? No. The children of Israel was underneath Pharaoh because they was not listening to God's will. So God created evil, which is Pharaoh. So when they say, I ain't doing what you say, Lord, the Lord said, fine. Pharaoh is your lot. So watch. They underneath the bondage of Pharaoh and they like it. 
It's not a problem to them. And then all of a sudden, it gets overbearing to them because Satan is a charmer. But then he becomes a harmer. See, God is an armor. If you look at our armor, our armor is hard, but really it protects you. So God's instructions look hard, but they protect you. God is our armor. Satan is a charmer, but really a harmer. So they didn't want God's armor. So God connected them to the charmer. But then they realized that the charmer was a harmer. So now they're crying out for the armor. And when the armor, watch this, they cry out for the armor, here come Moses. See, Moses is the in-between to get them out of the bondage of the charmer, the harmer, and get them back into the realm of the armor. So look, look at this. Isn't this glorious? So they was underneath Pharaoh because they wasn't listening to God. You as a child of God, let me just tell you this. Do you know that some of the places in your life God let you be underneath certain stuff because you wasn't listening to him? You wasn't listening to him. So then he let you be underneath certain stuff. Listen, if you look back at your life, everything wasn't supposed to go the way that it went. But you're not trying to go back there and fix it because yesterday is the one thing that you can't change. Change can only occur in the present. It can never occur in the past. So what the Holy Spirit does is he'll let you be underneath Satan until you realize that his way is better. And sometimes people never realize that his way is better. And so hell is their portion. But he'll let you be underneath Satan so that you will realize that though Satan looked like a charmer, Satan is really a harmer. So that you could get back into the armor. So The Lord often lets you not have the money that you're supposed to have. And guess what? It'd be the Lord having you at that place. Because you're not all the way delivered from the charmer and the harmer. You haven't really chosen the armor yet. Let me just tell you this. Wealth and riches is for those that have chosen the armor. Those that are still enticed by the charmer and those that are still underneath the harmer, they cannot wear the money coming to anointing, the supernatural money moving. Grace is not going to work in their life because this is only position for this. If God give you the supernatural money for this while you in this, it's like God is funding a shooter to shoot mass people. Would you give a murderer a machete and place them in the house full of elderly people? And they already have a track record of cutting up people. Would you pick them with a machete? So watch this. The children of Israel are broke. They're underneath this pharaohic system where they have to work real hard and then Pharaoh just throw them a little crumbs which is says if you look at it in your life you work real hard and it's like you just get little crumbs because one of the most hardest working people that I've seen sometimes is those um, Mexican uh, the Mexican workers 
You know, they always cleaning and stuff like that. But look how they paid him. They paid him small money. Paid him small money. But if you look at it, those workers be working so hard. What are they underneath? The system of Pharaoh. You know what the Lord want them to do? Is cry out. Say, Jesus, help me. And what Jesus would do is take them. But do you understand that some of them, despite them being underneath Pharaoh's system, they still don't cry out? Huh? You know, despite them being underneath that satanic system, they still don't ever call out to the Lord and say, Lord, help me. Because They've been blinded by the God of this age, Satan. But they're not making the money that they're working for. Listen, child of God, let me just tell you this. You're supposed to outsmart the system. The money that you make at a job, you're supposed to take that money and sow it. That money is not sufficient for the blessing of Abraham or the things that God have um, desired to get to you. That money is not it, but what the money is given to you as a tool for you to worship with that money. And a lot of children of God, this is what they're doing. They're taking the money and they're pocketing the money and they're pocketing the money. And then they need a financial miracle five weeks later. And then they need God to intervene three weeks later. But what God is saying, how am I going to intervene when you still over here underneath the the armor and the charmer and this money can only get to you when you underneath the armor. So you over here, you're not in position. When I release the supernatural money, I'm going to release it in the proximity, in the area, in the geography of the armor. So if you over here with the charmer and the armor, when I drop it, it's only going to drop in the hands of those that's underneath the armor. If you over here with the charmer and you over here with the armor, everything that's harming you going to keep on happening because I only can release it in the geography where the armor is. So what did the Bible say? Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. Why? Because when I have on the armor, I'm in the perfect will of God. When I have on the armor, I'm in the presence of Jesus. When I put on the armor, angels are ministering for me. When I put on the armor, money coming to me. When I put on the armor, my mind can understand why I must sow. See, because in the armor is the helmet of salvation. So I'm not going to know how to sow because sowing is a deliverance behavior. Sowing is the behavior of those that have been liberated. Sowing is the conduct of those that have been set free by Jesus, the Son of God. So I'm not going to be able to grasp Honoring God with the money that I have because I'm underneath the charmer and I'm underneath the harmer. And underneath this system is bondage, which means that my mind won't be able to ever agree with God's way of doing things. His righteousness is ratchetness to me. His righteousness is wickedness to me because I have been deceived. But when I come over here and I got on the armor of God, it means that I got the helmet of salvation. So I'm able to be delivered in my mind. I got a helmet that makes deliverance take place in my thoughts. So I'll know when my thoughts is in bondage. I'll know when God don't want me to think that because the helmet going to give me a signal. Blessed be God. The helmet going to give me a signal to let me know that what I'm thinking is not from the system of the armor. It's from the system of the charmer and the system of the harmer. So my helmet going to let me know. Get back underneath the umbrella. Get back underneath the covering. Get back underneath the hedge. The Bible said in the book of Ecclesiastes, if you break the hedge 
uh, uh, if you break the hedge, the serpent shall bite you. What that means that when you come out of the place, the stream that God revealed to you is safety. The stream that God revealed to you is protection. When you leave that place, now the devil has all access to drop in your soul garbage, drop in your soul poison, drop in your soul toxic Things that's not supposed to be there. So what happens? The helmet is to quicken your mind to let you know you've been set free from that. You're not supposed to go back there mentally. That made you bitter when you thought about it. That made you angry when you thought about it. Don't start thinking back there because that's what made you smoke the last time. That's what made you get drunk the last time. That's what made you get back into that wrong place the last time. So the helmet keeps on giving you an escape route mentally. It's called a helmet. Because everything that hell meant to hurt you, it'll deliver you from it. Helmet. Everything that hell meant to corrupt you, Everything that hell meant to distract you, hell meant to keep you broke, keep you struggling, keep you fearful, keep you worried, keep you stressed out, keep you lost, keep you insecure, keep you in the place of poverty, keep you sick in your body, keep you low in your energy, in your strength, in your joy. It is a hell meant because it fights what hell meant to do to you. It's a helmet because every single thing that comes from the gates of hell, it shields you from it. And it's a mental anointing. Let me just say this. You have to receive the mental anointing before you can walk in the money anointing. You have to receive the mental anointing before you can walk in the money anointing. That money anointing going to piggyback off of the mental anointing. Once you get the mental anointing intact, the money anointing is just going to flow without any stopping, without any issues. Saints, let me tell you something about the spirit realm. If Satan can stop you here, he can stop you here. If he can stop you here, he can stop you here. Why don't people sow? Because their mind is underneath demonic powers. They don't, they can't see because in the, the realm of bondage, you're not going to understand why should I sow money? It's just money. It's just, it's just two dollars. I don't understand what it's going to do. And I'll just put some money in your hands. I don't understand like what is what is this about? It's not nothing. I'm just putting the money inside the hands. Or I can't fit in the cash or just the hands. Because like, I can fit it in somebody's hands and stuff changed for me. Look at all the people that I don't fit some money in their hands. Why didn't it change for me when I fit it in their hands? I didn't like the other girl. I didn't like how her hands look. She had them dinosaur hands. She had them T-Rex. Hands. Every time she came around the little children had them the song tongue so dinosaur train. She had them dinosaur train hands. So when they said they want to train me to sew, I'm like, which train is you talking about? Is you talking about the dinosaur train? Is you talking about the dinosaur train? The dinosaur train? Is you trying to train me to be a dinosaur? Because the dinosaur hands be up here like this here, always looking violated. See, Satan, because Satan is familiar with how heaven was run. See, earth is not just the only one sowing. Heaven is full of sowers. Because the devil knows how heaven was run, because the devil was a sower. Those one third of the angels were sowers. What the devil did was, let's not sow into him no more. I'm God. 
Don't worship him no more. I'm your God. It's me. Look at all the privileges I got. Look at all the power I got. It's me. It's not, it's not him. Don't, don't worship him no more. Worship my decisions, my thoughts. But how did Lucifer make the shift? Stop the seed. Because those angels was worshiping God. They were sowing. Listen, Lucifer stopped the seed in heaven. One third stopped sowing off of Lucifer. So watch, Lucifer came down and saw Adam sowing and said, ooh. Worshiping God with the seed, watching it take place, watching Adam release the seed constantly and Lucifer getting more angry and angry and angry. Oh, oh, can't, can't enter into this garden. So watch. Lucifer is watching and God said, Let, uh, it's not good for you to be alone. Let me send somebody. The woman comes and Lucifer said, outside the garden. But Lucifer couldn't get in the garden. Adam sowing had protected the garden from any demon. And Lucifer say, hey, hey. Wow. Is, it, is, is somebody in here? I don't see nobody. Where, where is you at? Is, is you in here? Hello? Lucifer said, hey. Hey, over here. Oh, you over there? What you doing over there, girl? Girl, get out of the bushes. Shh, 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 shh. Have gods not said to either the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Has he not said this? Girl, you know, he did say that, right? He said that. No, no, he didn't. Think about it. Did he know that if you will eat of it, you'll become God? Here come the gossiping spirit. And this is where most women have gotten connected to this stream. Lucifer is getting this woman to sympathize. Lucifer is tapping into the emotional realm of this woman. Then the Bible said when she got in that emotional realm, it doesn't say that she got in the emotional realm, but I'm, I'm teaching you this from a place of wisdom. When she got into that emotional realm, the Bible said she looked at the tree. It was pleasant to her eyes. What's going on? Her emotions are being aroused by this tree now. Listen. Bondage started in the mind. The mind of Adam was free because his hands were sewing. While you're doing divine freedom activity, your mind is in a freedom divine state. So he doing divine freedom and liberty activity. So his mind is in a divine state. So the first thing Lucifer looks for is I need a mind. Because I, I can't stop the sowing. The sowing is going on. The sowing is creating a hedge. The sowing is keeping me off. 
So I need a mind. He talks to the woman. He gets her mind and then he steps into the garden. This is the first case of man becoming possessed with Satan. Because when, when Lucifer got into her mind, Lucifer entered into her body and she became the serpent. So watch this. She went from sowing with Adam to telling Adam, here, what God said not, here it is. Why is she doing this now? Because Lucifer is inside of her body. But Lucifer entered through her mind. Lucifer can't enter through sowing because the sowing stopped Lucifer. The sowing deleted all demonic activity. So the only last resort is I need somebody mind and I can't enter Adam's mind because Adam is too busy doing divine activity. So as long as he is doing divine activity, his mind going to be in a divine activity state. Let me just say this and it's powerful. When you have an assignment to help your man of God, Know that Lucifer is targeting you. And all Lucifer wants is your mind, your time, your conversation. Lucifer wants you to have a talk because that's the only thing that Lucifer can enter through. Oftentimes when you are assigned to help Adam, whether you be male or female, you supposed to direct all your energy to helping Adam. If you're not helping Adam, What the snake says can access you. Oh my God. Listen, I'm showing you something powerful. That when you doing what God wants you to do, no devil can access you. It's only when you're not doing what God wants you to do that the devil has accessibility to your mind. Because as long as you, watch, remember what I said, as long as you're doing divine activity, doing it, you think in divine thoughts. To be continued. I'm live tonight.